Coming up tonight on YCN News. New Hampshire Governor Maggie Hassan applauds a bipartisan Senate vote to accept federal money to expand Medicaid. Bellows Falls voters approve spending $8.2 million to improve water quality and flow. And Putney, Vermont voters work through their 25 warrant articles in the annual town meeting. For more news, weather, and sports, it's time for YCN, your local view. Now, your daily digest of the Dartmouth Lake Sunapee region, Southern Vermont, and Windsor County. News, sports, weather, and all that is happening in our area. The news on YCN, your local view. Good evening and welcome to this Thursday edition of YCN News. I'm Rose Spillman. New Hampshire Governor Maggie Hassan is applauding a bipartisan Senate vote today to accept federal money to expand Medicaid. Today's state Senate vote of 18 to 5 supports Senate Bill 413, an act to offer medical care to the state's neediest residents. Hassan thanked Senate President Republican Chuck Morse of Salem Democratic Senator Sylvia Larson of Concord and other Senate Republicans and Democrats for their support of the bill. Both parties showed goodwill and worked together to make the choice to offer health care to about 50,000 residents, Hassan says in a prepared statement. The Senate's vote in favor of Medicaid expansion will help the state's economy. That's because, says Hassan, this will reduce passing on costs to businesses. The bill will help the state reduce uncompensated care at hospital emergency rooms while pushing preventative care. Included in the bill are plans for substance abuse and mental health treatment plans. With today's Senate vote, the bill moves on to the House, whose members earlier endorsed Medicaid expansion. Also in New Hampshire politics, House members passed on Wednesday a bill that, if passed by the Senate, would ban the use of handheld phones while driving. The bill applies to handheld cell phones, not to Bluetooth or other hands-free devices, reports New Hampshire Public Radio. An exception would be made to use a cell phone in an emergency call to 911. The vote on the bill was 192 in favor and 133 against. Lebanon Democrat George Sykes supports the bill, saying it's good for public safety. But Republican and Dunbarton Representative J.R. Howell says it is an unnecessary act. There are other reasons for negligent and distracted driving on the road, Howell says, that need to be enforced first. Fines would apply if a driver was caught violating the proposed ban if it becomes a law. And if it does, drivers under age 18 cannot use any mobile devices while driving. First, the New Hampshire Senate must debate the bill. In other Vermont town meeting news, Bellows Falls voters approved spending $8.2 million to improve water quality and flow. The ballot vote passed by a wide margin with 307 yes votes compared to 164 no votes, the Eagle Times reports. Water line upgrades will happen along Route 5 and other areas within Bellows Falls. The water line upgrade is a capital improvement project. Users of the village's water system will pay for the upgrades. The cost will not come from tax revenue. This means the water rate may jump 18%. By example, a home valued at $100,000 may see its water bill increase $47 to $55 per month. When completed, greater water pressure will help firefighters better put out fires. Bellows Falls is a village within the town of Rockingham. It is governed by an elected board of trustees and Rockingham town manager Chip Stearns also guides the trustees as he does the Rockingham Select Board. When we return, we'll continue with more news. The YCN News continues in a moment. Welcome back to YCN News. I'm Rose Spillman. Despite the slow climb to spring, winter continues and drivers still need to drive for the cold, snowy weather. A reminder from the Vermont State Police to do so follows a crash of a Red Cross Bloodmobile van Wednesday morning. The weather was cloudy with reports of snow and black ice on the highway at 6.31 a.m. The driver of the Red Cross Bloodmobile bus, 56-year-old Zeliko Popovac, was forced to drive into a snowbank after a car cut him off. Police say Popovac was driving south on I-89 after exiting the Royalton area. A small vehicle pulled in front of the bus and its driver braked fast due to the road conditions. 
Popovac was unable to slow the bus in time to avoid hitting the car. He steered the bus into the road's median, driving through a U-turn and into a large snowbank. The crash resulted in extensive front end and side damage to the 2004 bus, police report. Popovac of South Burlington, Vermont, received minor injuries. He was wearing a seatbelt. Hartford, Vermont ambulance crew members checked Popovac on scene. State police remind drivers of cars and small trucks that while they may be able to stop or slow quickly on the road, commercial vehicles with their larger size and weight cannot. Motorists need to remember to leave sufficient room between themselves and a vehicle they are overtaking when returning to a lane. Putney, Vermont town meeting voters worked through 25 warrant articles on Tuesday, including the budget, which they increased by $22,000. Residents decided to use Rescue Inc. for their ambulance services rather than the select board recommended Gold Cross Ambulance. Other town meeting warrant articles prompting debate included how Putney will fund its library. Let's listen to discussion of Article 8. Uh, Stephen Carnella, some library director. This is a good thing. I encourage everybody to just vote yes on it. Um, the pros of it, as Chris said, it gives us a broader tax exempt status. Um, and also, we would have more um, transparency. We'd be audited, like the rest of the town is audited. Uh, we'll actually save a little bit of money because we won't have our own bookkeeper, which technically we really shouldn't. We should have the town uh, treasurer be cutting our paychecks and be paying our bills. And for years we've had our own bookkeeper. So just under the statute of um, the Department of Libraries, this puts us in a much better position for uh, also for grants and things like that. But I want to assure everybody, nothing in the library will change in terms of uh, the, the board of trustees that you elect uh, are really the, uh, the governing body of the library. And nothing about the hours are going to change or the staff at this point or uh, our collection development. So it, it's a good thing, and I encourage everybody to support it. Thank you. What a and how the town will pay for repairs to the fire station's roof, Article 13. What it boils down to is that through many hours of discussion with our lawyer and negotiations back and forth, it became clear that we could keep spending money on legal fees but it was very clear that Westfield Construction was not going to come forward to um, solve this problem with us readily. And therefore, we decided that it made more sense under the advice of our legal counsel, or uh, an outside legal counsel, it was not town counsel because of a, because of a um, conflict of interest, but that it, we were better off taking that settlement and cutting our losses than spending more on legal fees and probably not coming out, and, out ahead in the long run. So that's what we chose to do. It's an unfortunate and expensive situation that we wish was not the case, and uh, this seemed to be the, the best solution to a not good situation. So that's where we're at. All those in favor of withdrawing motion, the mo uh, withdrawing Article 13. No, sorry. Yes, Article 13. Please say aye. Aye. All opposed? Okay, Article 13 is withdrawn. YCN will bring you news of Putney's annual school district meeting on Friday. Town meetings on both sides of the Connecticut River bring changes at the election booth. For instance, one longtime member of the Claremont, New Hampshire school board is stepping down. David Putnam will remain active on other city boards as volunteer. Community of Claremont as school board member and school board chair from the Claremont School Board, March 5th, 2014. Thank you all. And, uh, in honor and privilege, we have participated in this venture. Um, children has been the focus. When I think of my uh, 50 or so years, and I realize that I've seen children start um, and graduate. I've seen that three times. And that's a, something that's humbling. And I'm humbled to have served with all of you. I'm going to continue thinking of things I want to help the community with. So I'm not going away. I look forward to 
continue working with all of you. He will continue to chair the Stevens High School Renovation Committee per a vote of the school board, even though Putnam will no longer be on the school board. Current school board chair Richard Seaman thanked Putnam at last night's school board meeting. When YCN News returns, we'll hear from Upper Valley Chronicles Ann Holmes, who spoke with Jan Lambert and Carmen Bywater with the Valley Green Journal. The YCN News continues in a moment. Welcome back to YCN News. I'm Rose Spillman. Now we'll have a look at our weather for the next five days, and then let's take a look at some local high school sports. Tomorrow we're expecting sunny skies with highs in the upper 30s and a low of 18 degrees. Saturday temperatures will rise to a high of 43 degrees with lows in the teens. Sunday will have highs in the 30s and lows in the 20s. Monday and Tuesday will have highs around 40 degrees with lows up to the 20s on Monday and down in the teens on Tuesday. And now let's take a look at the Northeastern and National Radar Maps. Now let's look at our community calendar. Tomorrow night has a great variety of events to offer in the area. In Brattleboro, Vermont, the Women's Film Festival is beginning at 7 p.m. in the New England Youth Theater. In Sunapee, New Hampshire, a coffee house will be showing performances by Jane Fallon and Justin Carloni starting at 7 p.m. in the Sunapee Methodist Church. In Putney, Vermont, the Sweetback Sisters and Elixir will hold its show at the next stage starting at 7.30 p.m. Remember, you can submit local events from your community by sending them to news at ycnnow.com. Hallie O'Brien here at beautiful Q Burke in Vermont, home of the legendary Burke Mountain Academy, where five alumni competed in the Sochi Olympic Games, including gold medalist Michaela Schifrin. Oh, yeah, I know you're impressed. Don't! See, they've got classic Vermont terrain. From natural trails and natural trees, you can have at it all across the mountain. It's New England's hidden gem. We've gotten lots of snow, it's been cold, and conditions are great, but this weekend it's gonna be a little warmer and we're looking forward to it. Pat's Peak is hosting their Hawaiian weekend, so bring your Hawaiian shirt and enjoy two great days of live reggae music and an outdoor barbecue with hot tubs on the deck. Granite Gorge's second annual Gearbox Challenge is a snowmobile hill climb this Saturday. Burke is small mountain feel with big mountain vert. It's a fun place to come, great place to learn. Kids have fun. My skis go in the snow and then I ski down on the mountain. All right, so what's the Q stand for? Quintessential. Quaint. Quit. Quality answers. Okimo's Light the Night Rail Jam is Saturday night and it has $5,000 in cash and prizes. Learning to ski and snowboard is easy and fun at Bromley's terrain-based learning zone and start fun, start free is the best way to do it. This weekend's Vermont Open Snowboard Competition is at Stratton with $20,000 in prize money. It's March, the sun's out, and the snow is plentiful, so get outside and enjoy it. We'll see you next week. Woo! Now let's take a quick look at local high school sports. Yesterday there were some important boys basketball games as part of the Division II tournament. The first of these games was Kennett versus Hanover. Unfortunately, Hanover was overcome by Kennett's scoring. The final score of that game was 44 to 40. The second game involving one of our local schools was Lebanon versus Goffstown. Lebanon was skilled enough to drive past Goffstown's scoring and won 74 to 77. Be on the lookout for two tournament games tomorrow, the first being Sunapee versus Wilton Lindboro as part of Division IV boys basketball, and the second being a Lebanon versus Merrimack Valley girls basketball Division II game. When YCN News continues, we'll hear from Capital Connections' John O'Connor, who spoke with Republican candidate for the District 1 Executive Council seat, Joe Kenny. The YCN News continues in a moment. 